Thanks, Andy. And uh, it's a real pleasure to be with you all here at the IEDC here in Toronto uh, this afternoon. Really excited to talk a little bit about this topic because I think it's very relevant to all of us in the room, whether you're a site selector like me, whether you're an economic development professional, whether you're a service provider. Our industry is changing, and it's getting ready to change radically. And there are a lot of forces at play that are driving that change. And I want to walk through some of those forces that are at play, uh, what's, what's causing some of those forces uh, to be in play, and what we as the economic development profession can do about it. You know, in economic development, certainly in the past 10 years, I've been in economic development now 25 years, and I think we have started to see a great deal of change in economic development with regards to the pro pro type of projects we're seeing. And it really is the rise of the disruptors. It's these companies that didn't even exist five to 10 years ago that are now driving economic development projects, that are driving the way that business is done uh, around the country, around the world, that's changing things radically. So we're dealing with very different companies that we, from what we used to deal with just even a few years ago. We're also seeing a great deal of change with regards to what's happening within the facilities we work on. Facilities are being automated. Capital investment is surging, whereas the number of jobs, which is a metric that most of us are measured on, uh, are declining rapidly. And it's changing the nature of economic development projects, this disruption because of artificial intelligence and robotics. It's changing things very radically. And you may think, well, what does this have to do with us as economic developers? Guess what, folks? We're next for disruption. We're next in line. And you may think, think about it for a minute. You may think, oh, I'm a human, ain't no robot going to take my job. I'm going to be just fine. Think about how the profession has changed in the past 10 years. Walk out in the exhibit hall and look at the service providers out there. And there's nothing against them. But for those of you who've been in economic development for a while, you probably, your first job, you started out in a, as doing research. Guess what? They can push a button right now, and that research job is gone. For those of you who've done workforce training as part of your job, guess what? That's being radically transformed by technology. It's all going online now. So think about it. Already, there are these forces at play that are starting to disrupt what you do as economic developers. And it's coming, and it's building, and it's changing. Part of the problem we have, and why I think we're so ripe for disruption as economic developers, is that very few people understand what we as economic developers do. I don't know about y'all, I never get invited to career day at my kid's school. It's not like I have a cool job, I'm not a fireman, or a NASCAR driver, or a truck driver. My kids still don't know what I do. I've been married 15 years, my wife doesn't know what I do. She knows I pay the Target bill every month, which is very, very important. But she doesn't understand what we do. And part of that is because most people don't understand who economic developers are. And let's be honest, very few of us ever set out to become economic developers. Gil's going to tell a great story about his uh, start as a taco vendor. How many of you, very few of you, graduated from college saying, I'm going to go into economic development? The reason you didn't is because you didn't know what economic development was. And that's because we're, we're somewhat of a hidden profession. And so those people that are exposed to it really don't understand what economic development is. And those that do have just an inkling of understanding what economic development is think it's all you're doing is, is going around having steak dinners and whining and dining people. My wife calls it the scallops wrapped in bacon circuit. That's what she thinks that I do, is I just go, I go fly all over the place, stay in beautiful hotels, and then wind and dine, and I get paid well for it. And that's a perception of economic development. Some people think that what we're doing is we're just paving over wetlands, that we're out there to destroy the environment. And other people, well, we might as well be just clubbing baby seals. You know, they, they think that badly of economic development. They just don't know what we do. And that's a problem. And again, that makes us ripe for disruption but there's also strong political forces at play that don't like economic development. This is a photo that was in the Wall Street Journal a couple of weeks ago. It was a photo of the crowd after the passage of the new Seattle Millionaire's Tax. Now, as those of you from Washington State know, Washington does not have an income tax, but Seattle has decided to impose a special tax on, on income in Seattle in order to fund social welfare programs. Those ladies in that aisle are right out of central casting from the loony left. And, and just think about it for a moment. These people are cheering at an initiative that will probably cost jobs in Seattle. In fact, I'm not yet unconvinced, or I actually think that part of the reason why Amazon's in play is because of actions like this. 
in corporate welfare, the 1%, the establishment. Guess what, folks? You're the face of the establishment. You're the face of the 1%. Your citizens who are upset about the 1% and the privileges enjoyed by the establishment, they can't walk in the CEO's office and, and, and yell and scream at them, but they can come at you. You are the person that they are upset at. But it's not just these national trends that the Republican and the Democratic Party who have both seen, whether it's corporate welfare, picking winners and losers of what the Republicans say, or economic development stands in the way of social justice and money that should be used to fund social programs going for economic development. It even comes to the local level where people are saying stop industrial development because we want to preserve open space or preserve history or preserve something that's special. This is not just a phenomenon in the United States though. It has gotten to epic proportions here in Canada. This country, from a Canadian perspective, is tearing itself apart. I mean, it's near riots when you see some of the photos that of what's going on here in Canada. I mean, it's really, really bad. From a Canadian perspective, that's a riot, folks. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's really, really getting bad. And, 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 and we are sometimes, we are, we are in the crosshairs of these forces that are taking over um, and, and impacting what we do in economic development. But you know, some of the problem is the media hypes it up. Some of the problem is ourselves. These are, I somewhat of an economic development nerd. I collect these headlines of what's going on around the country with regards to incentives and economic development. And these are a few of my favorites. The first one is truly my favorite because if anyone can spot cronyism from a mile away, it's an official from Illinois. <laughs> and uh, the, the second one, it was actually in my hometown newspaper, Incentives, PBS versus GE. That ran the week that Virginia granted a $300,000 grant to GE for a new customer call center the same week that the state cut funding, $2 million worth of funding for public television. The third one, Florida Grants uh, gives program $423,000 incentive to a cocaine dealer, obviously a scandal, particularly in Florida because the average coke dealer in Florida gets at least a million dollars. So this guy was really upset. <laughs> and, and so when you people see these headlines, they get wound up. They think that what we're doing is secretive, that we're doing something that's underhanded, and they get upset and they have a reaction to it. But for a moment, let's think about what's really going on. Think about, for a moment, the, the seminal moments of American history. 1936, FDR is running for his second term as president. What's the song they play when the, he walks in the convention hall? Happy days are here again. The economy's starting to turn, the Great Recession is receding. It was a message about economic hope and prosperity. Fast forward, 1984, Ronald Reagan. What was the ad that was run? It's morning in America again. And Ronald Reagan was able to affirmatively answer yes to the question he posed in the 1980 debate of, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Obviously, the Reagan revolution was starting to turn around the American economy. Bill Clinton, no, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Actually, that's the wrong speech. It was actually 1992, and you look at the campaign, James Carvel, his political aide that year, what was the theme? It's the economy, stupid focusing, getting people focused on what matters to you personally, jobs, the economy, growth. It's not about foreign relations. It's not about that we just had the Berlin Wall fall. It's not about that we just survived the, the invasion of Kuwait by Iraq. We don't care about those foreign issues. It's the economy, stupid. And then again, this race, need I say more, uh, a focus very significantly on job creation and economic prosperity. And the reason these political leaders are focused on this is because one of the primal fears of any human being is this, being unemployed, having an insecure future, not knowing what the future is going to be for your children and whether you're going to provide a, a higher standard of living for your children than what you had. And so what we as economic developers need to do is we need to capture this energy and channel it to move us forward. And when you look at polling data, this is a poll that was taken right before the uh, uh, parliamentary elections here in Canada in 2015, and people were asked, what's the number one issue they care about? As you see, economy is the number one issue that was polling in 2015. Gallup does a similar kind of poll weekly in the United States asking people what do they care about and what's the top concern. And while you see some percentage change over time, and certainly it mirrors the economic cycle, still at 21 percent, Jobs in the economy is the number one issue that people in America care about. It's not healthcare. 
It's not immigration. It's not the environment. Although when you link environment and economy, it's something you're going to hear uh, talked about later in the pr presentation by Brian. There is some correlation there. But it's the economy and jobs is what people care about and they're motivated about. And they, there is a silent majority out there that if you can convince them that you are linked to economic growth, you're linked to job creation, and you're linked to better prosperity, they're going to be your ally. And it's up to us to tap that energy and use it for our benefit. To drive the, home, the point home a little bit more, uh, National League of Cities did a survey of all the mayor's speeches, their state of the city speeches, of what was the key word that was in every one of those speeches. And four years in a row, people aren't talking about crime, they're not talking about transportation, economic development is the number one issue, four years running in all of these municipal elections. So it's not just national leaders, it's local leaders as well. Economic development matters to people. It motivates them to action. And again, we need to seize upon that. And again, it's not just a North American phenomenon. Whether you're Prime Minister uh, Merkel in Germany, whether you're Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Japan, whether you're Prime Minister May in, in the UK, whether you're President Macron in France or you're Prime Minister Trudeau, jobs and the economy is the number one issue that people care about around the world. And there's probably one notable exception. I don't think this guy cares a whole lot about jobs in the economy. But, you know, for, for most of the civilized world, that's what most matters to people when they are what they expect out of their government. So you think, well, maybe, okay, I get the jobs in the economy are important. Maybe it's this incentive stuff, these corporate giveaways that really scare people. There's a little bit of polling out there with regards to people's feelings on incentives. This was done by the Tampa Bay Times and uh, Channel 9 a couple of years ago before the recent unpleasantness in Florida, and I mean that by the legislative session that Florida had, which was very controversial with regards to economic development funding. But 2014 was also a very, 2013, 2014 was also a very contentious time with economic development in Florida. 66%, this is a scientifically conducted poll, support incentives. You probably can't get my wife's from Florida, my in-laws are from Florida, so I can say this. 66% uh, of Florida, Floridians probably don't even believe we landed on the moon. And the idea that you can get 66% of people to say they support economic incentives to attract businesses to move here, notice the key words there. People link these incentives and economic development spending with prosperity and job creation. This poll was just released a couple weeks ago in my home state of Virginia that was done regarding people's views regarding economic development incentives. Again, overwhelming support for economic development and economic development spending. Now that doesn't mean though that the people, the silent majority that I'm talking about are gonna give you a blank check. Because when you twist the question a little bit and you ask, well, what about if companies are given money and they don't perform? The, the public opinion moves very, very quickly. They're not giving you a blank check. They want accountability, they want transparency, they want results. So again, it doesn't mean that you have a blank check, that this, 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 this wellspring of support that you have behind you that you may not think you have, but really is there, it can turn very, very quickly if people suspect that bad things are happening. But again, you've got the people behind you. But what does that mean for those of us in the economic development profession? It means if we're gonna make sure we are not disrupted, we need to change. And in order to change, we need to do a lot less of this. And for those of you who are millennials in the room, I'll explain what this is. There was a show in the 1960s called Get Smart, and whenever the, he was a secret agent, whenever he talked to his boss, he went under the cone of silence. Now, some of you may have heard of that term. All these hush discussions, secrecy, confidentiality, we need to move beyond that and instead move towards more engagement of our community. We need to show up at city council meetings. We need to talk to the public. We need to let them understand, help them understand that what we're doing is positive and moving the community forward and that we as economic development professionals are the agents of that positive change. We need to do a lot less of this, focusing on the big shovel and the groundbreaking and the wonderful announcements that we're doing and instead getting involved at the grassroots and going to those transportation planning meetings and going to zoning meetings and going to planning sessions and really getting involved and being a positive force and, uh, for the community and helping people understand the role of economic development and what that means for their prosperity. It means as professionals we've got to do a lot less of this. 
and cutting ribbons and having grand opening ceremonies. And instead, we need to do a lot more of this, written incentive policies, getting a process where people are bought into what we're doing and creating parameters around incentives and creating that accountability and creating that transparency so people understand what we do as economic developers and that we are held to a standard of professionalism that people have bought into. And we need to do a lot less of this, smoke-filled rooms, quiet conversations, uh, with people being very suspicious and we're a bunch of just uh, conniving with fat cats and instead we need to be talking about return on investment. And we need to talk about how economic development spending and what we do is a net be benefit to the community. That if people want good schools, economic development is important. If people want a safe community, economic development is important. If they want recreational assets, economic development is important. And that ec return on investment is what, that, that investments in economic development have that positive return that allows for a community to go forward. Because if we don't, folks, it's going to be like the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. The asteroid is coming at us. We're about to be disrupted. And if we don't change, we're going to have the same fate as the dinosaurs. Thank you so much.